three minutes, three minute warning. Go grab your beverage, get comfortable. Three minute warning. Two minute warning. One, one minute warning. And that's mostly for myself. Bing. Hello, friends, and welcome to Wildflower Wednesdays with Friends of the Desert Mountains. Wildflower Wednesdays are part of the Coachella Valley Wildflower Festival, brought to you by City of Palm Desert, 29 Palms Band of Mission Indians, and Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians. Thanks to these fine supporters, we are able to bring you wildflower reports from the field, hot tips and hot lines, and all things wildflower and adjacent doing my best here. Um, I'll be honest, I think I've been out sniffing too many flowers. I have a little uh, allergies going on and stuff right now. So I'm going to try and jam through this and not do too many bells and whistles. Um, uh, this week, we will tell you where you can find some wildflowers here in the Coachella Valley. And I also have some resources where you can listen to find out about wildflowers outside of our area specifically, but here in Southern California, where the wildflowers are the best. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit about a specific type of wildflower and how you can be a community scientist helping track butterfly migrations. Yes, I present to you, this is that share the screen thing that I have to do. <laughs> Let's see if she can get it right. How's everybody doing tonight? How's your mom? Uh, let's see, share here. Okay. All right, that's right. <laughs> let's put this thing into functioning here. I present to you milkweeds. 
in the monument. Yes, milkweeds of the Santa Rosa and San Jacinto Mountains National Monument are actually pretty important things because they feed and give a habitat to monarch butterflies during their migration from their midwinter or overwintering in Mexico before they spread out through North America. It's kind of impressive. Now, here in the Coachella Valley and even in the monument, look at this. We have 11 different kinds of milkweeds. So they have a pretty good shot at surviving their passage through here and then continuing on up into Northern California. Um, check it out. We have true milkweeds and we have climbing milkweeds. Um, I'm going to just let you take a look at some of the pictures of these. I'm not like a milkweed expert, but they're awfully pretty to look at. And you'll start to see some similarities and um, where you can expect to find them. Because in a second, I'm going to tell you why we want to find them and then how you can help with that. All right. So let's take a look at our milkweeds now. Now, this one seems fairly obvious. California milkweed. Hey, homegirl, what's up? California milkweed. Uh, pretty in pink and the habitat, flats, grassy slopes, and open woods. So, you know, we're, we're not going to see milkweeds as much necessarily on the dry side of the monument, more on the moist side, but I will tell you that we have actually seen milkweeds growing in the Indio Badlands. They were growing and they were already blooming when we hiked there almost uh, what, two months ago. So they're a hardy little plant sometimes and very impressive. Desert milkweed, well, that seems fairly obvious. Here we are in the desert. Um, I will make this document available to you guys after the fact. Um, just like to get you to tune in now and check it out. Again, desert regions, mountain slopes, and roadsides. Remember what we talked about with disturbed ground and how that gives plants a chance to actually thrive sometimes? There you go. The white stem milkweed. People spend a lot of time coming up with these names, but obviously it has a white stem. And look at this. The flower cluster is a little different here. Not as pink, but still. Oh, cute. I'm sorry. We're just going to blame it on the allergy medicine and keep moving along. These canyons, washes, gravelly slopes from 600 to 3,500 feet. So, you know, they give you a lot of time to like find them and pop out and be like, hey, get a picture. So this is where the, the uh, monarchs actually lay their eggs on these plants. So that's why they're kind of important because they need a place to leave their babies. Narrow leaf milkweed. Seems fairly well named. Those leaves are pretty narrow. And look at how pretty the flowers are. They're almost kind of a reverse of the other ones. This one has an AKA, Mexican World Milkweed. I love it. Uh, dry climates, plains, hills, valleys, roadsides, and let's say it together, disturbed ground. Rush Milkweed. Huh. Why are you in such a rush? And this is, it's also known as desert milkweed, but we saw desert milkweed a, mile, a minute ago. So I don't know, I'm starting to get confused. And look at the picture down below. You can actually see what looks like mm, blister beetles on it more than actually butterflies. But so that shows you that a lot of pollinators really enjoy the milkweed. Uh, this one, their habitat, non-clonal, non-invasive. Oh, wait, sorry. That's growth habitat. My bad. Just habitat where you find them. Desert areas on dry slopes and plains. Do we have those here? Yes, we do. Ooh, the woolly milkweed. This is where we make sweaters for the tiny little monarch butterflies from. I'm kidding. But again, look at those flowers. Those are fascinating. Similar to the others, but just their, their little cup-like leaves are so amazing. Spring and summer. So this is the time that you would see them. Dry slopes and plains. Again, that's what we do best here. Okay, now they're having some fun with me. This is the fringed twine vine. Fringed twine vine. And look at that. Fenestrum. Sinocoides. You can't call me. I'm not doing this from the office today, but you know, let me know if I'm mispronouncing these because I know you listen and I know you got something to say. Uh, their habitat is a little more 
diverse than some of the other places, desert washes and slopes, canyons, floodplains, disturbed sites, and they climb over bushes along streams and washes in the 1500 to 4500 foot zone. So it's definitely up there. We're getting into the higher regions now. And to follow up with the woolly, now we have the hairy, the hairy rambling vine milkweeds. So there were the true milkweeds and then the vining milkweeds. We're into the vining milkweeds now. Well, their pods look very similar to uh, like the white stem milkweeds, I will say, at least what I'm looking at here. Um, they are pretty hardy little things. Look at those little stars. Hey, butterfly, you can trust us with your babies. Now check it out. Hot, these guys can do hard desert pavement. They don't need your disturbed ground. You know, those little, those little weak milkweeds that need the disturbed ground. This one's like, now I can do it in the desert cement, desert pavement, and in the washes where, you know, it's a little sandier and softer there too. Wavy leaf, twine vine, wavy leaf, twine vine. Again, similar yet different, but still counts as a milkweed that the monarchs like. Fenestrum crispum. Uh, the habitat here, <clears throat> pardon me, found in open, dry, rocky canyons and often among shrubs in chaparral and pinyon juniper woodlands in the 3,000 to 5,500 foot range. So again, we're getting much higher here. I think, is that, are we done? Nope, a couple more. The Utah vine milkweed. Funastrum utahense. I don't know. I guess it hitchhiked here from Utah on the 15. I have no idea how this got here, but apparently it's doing pretty well and the butterflies like it. And it's such a pretty yellow color, which is, you know, kind of a theme for this year when it comes to wildflowers. We have yellow at every level, honestly. But here it is. It is a small vine with highly branched twining stem, rarely exceeding a meter in length. It uses other plants as support. Lean on me. When your milkweed, I'll stop right there. Anyhow, it grows open, dry, sandy, or gravelly areas, which pretty much covers everything we have here in the Coachella Valley. And that is Monarchs in the Monument. This was prepared for us by the our friends at the Santa Rosa and San Jacinto Mountains National Monument. So thank you guys very much for sharing that with me so that I could talk a bit about the very many kinds of milkweeds that you could find here to share with our friends at the Monarch Joint Venture. The Monarch Joint Venture, that is the name of this organization. And these are the scientists that are out in the field right now studying the butterfly migration. And they need to know how much milkweed is here in the valley for these guys to feed and lay eggs on so they can get an idea of how successful this migration will be. There was a time when they were counting upwards like or downwards of 2000, 2000 butterflies like overwintering in Mexico in just this one area, they had really, the monarch itself had really died out, but Everybody's working to bring it back. And part of that is tracking where there is milkweeds. And since eh, all the flying things really like to come through our area here, it's good that we have their snacks that they like to stop on, stop and check out on now. What it is called when you help with these kinds of things where I will tell you, I'm getting to it. I finally figured out a way to show you iNaturalist without my disappearing phone trick. The Monarch Joint Venture needs our help. So there's a couple different ways that you can either use their technique to um, give information. They, give, they have a few different ways for you to submit when you have found milkweed, but the easiest way that we all have found so far is iNaturalist. So you can uh, come to this monarchjointventure.org and get involved. That's where the uh, study the monarchs community science opportunities are. And honestly, it's, it's, it's really kind of neat the way that people get involved and the whole family can be involved in this sort of thing. 
You'll find out more on your own. I'm going to keep moving along, but you can join into Monarch Joint Venture and check it out. Now, see, before I go away, I suppose I should show you this one thing. Where is it? Not there. I'm showing it to you too soon. Where is it? Come back to me. Oh, here it is. Isn't he trusting? Trust the process, Karen. Trust the process. Here we go. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to just kind of relax for a minute and enjoy the butterflies. All right, there you go. There's your daily ration of uh, monarch butterflies flying past you in mass migration. Well, look at that. It's Milkweeds in the Monument one more time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the iNaturalist website. You can use the website or you can use your smartphone to participate in this. And actually, if you go to the... Um, the Monarch website from earlier, try that again, the Monarch Joint Venture. If you go to there, they actually have some other ways that you can submit findings as well if you don't want to use iNaturalist. But this is the actual project that we have set up so that you can go in and identify all the different kinds of ones that you find out there. Now, a lot of times I don't know what a flower is. So you take your iNaturalist and you upload a picture of whatever you just found and it will tell you what has been seen nearby, what it most likely is. And so that's how you end up learning more and your learning and your knowledge gets shared with scientists who study the data that we provide here. And they get to see this is all the stuff. People find it all the time. It really does exist here. It's not an Easter egg hunt that we're sending you on or a wild goose chase. No, it's a, it's a wild milkweed chase. And hopefully you'll get out there and find it. I actually have found a little bit myself, but look at the beautiful pictures that people share with us. And there's another reason to check out iNaturalist because there's beautiful pictures of wildflowers, any kind you want. And if you wanna know where they are, then you just go to the map. And it shows you, this is where all the milkweed in the monument observations have been found already. We can make this larger. So this is what people have reported on so far. Most of it's on well, our side of the hills over here for the most part. So maybe I was talking through my you know other portal at this point in time, but there is milkweeds to be found. It's a great challenge. And when you go and do it, you actually are helping scientists study the flutterbys and hope that this important pollinator will survive and thrive. So that's it for Milkweeds in the Monument for now. So if you want to know more about it, go to iNaturalist, or you can always email us friends at desertmountains.org. I answer it, so I will get it back to you, and we will help you get hooked up with that. Coming up next, well, I came across this beautiful picture today, and I was like, that's what everybody's looking for, isn't it? When you think about Southern California wildflowers, this is what you're looking for. Just great swaths of land like that. And this is why we protect and preserve public lands as much as we do so that these places can exist and so that these species can exist and can thrive. And that is what Friends of the Desert Mountains and a lot of other conservation organizations work together to do is to help preserve lands that deserve to be protected. Can you imagine if, if you're children or grandchildren never got to see this, never got to experience this connection to the land here on planet earth. It's no good. So the reason I bring this up, this is the California Native Plant Society. And they will of course are gonna encourage everybody to um, 
work with native plants and that is a real plus. I love to see all kinds of different flowers, but what's gonna do best here in the desert and survive best without needing too much water and actually provide food and habitat for the species that do come through here are native things, the milkweeds, these kinds of plants. Now these guys actually have an event coming up that I wanted to share with you since they were so kind as to let me share this flower picture today, but they have an event coming up on Thursday, March 24th. It's a 27 year wildflower journey. The Making of Beauty and the Beast, California Wildflowers and Climate Change with Nita Winter and Rob Badger. These internationally acclaimed conservation photographers, Rob Badger and Nita Winter, take you behind the scenes of their 27 year journey photographing wildflowers and super blooms. So you can imagine what you're gonna see is pretty amazing stuff. So for this one, you wanna go to, think of, if you can't remember it, but it's the California, here, scroll down. It's the California Native Plant Society, San Gabriel Mountains chapter. So cnps-sgm.org. And then you would just go to the activities page and that's where you can uh, sign up. It's a, it's a Zoom event. So you can look at it wherever you are in the world that you want to mm -hmm. Zoom in. And um, da, 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 da. Uh, I'm looking here, it looks like it's free. So, hey, bringing you free fun, you're welcome. All right, coming up next. You probably wanna see some flowers. So let me go over here. Hey, everybody, look, there's my Zoom. Look at these flowers, okay? This, um, so I didn't have a chance to get out and do a lot of specific flower hunting this week and I apologize for that somewhat, but everywhere I drove, because I did have to drive sometimes, I was looking. And definitely this right here is North Palm Springs. It's not, it's not where I sent you earlier. This is another location in North Palm Springs. Um, but I'm just letting you know that, you know, north of Vista Chino and all along, I saw like on North Indian Canyon, there were flowers. I went over to Desert Hot Springs and went via like, Farner, Mountain View, Hacienda, all kinds of the little guys growing along the sides of the road. And look at this, there's the fields. Now these are, you know, smaller diminutive plants surviving in the desert, not putting them out there, but there's at least three or four good colors in here and it's beautiful, it's a lovely field. Now, what do we remember about being responsible recreators when we go out to look at flowers? Mm -hmm. Is it these things right here? Stay on the paths, stay on bare ground, leave the flowers unharmed and take only photographs. Well, this is what my friend here did. This the person behind these pictures, there's our fabulous desert. Uh, I, this is one I haven't stuck my nose down to it yet, but I hear it smells really good. So now I can't wait. This is desert verbena. It is the pink mats that you are seeing everywhere in, all around the valley really right now. And they're gorgeous, but this, uh, these pictures were taken by, uh, do you guys know who makes, who did the Robo Lights? Kenny Irwin, yeah. This is our friend, Kenny Irwin. He actually captures really beautiful uh, photographs, of sunsets and the sky a lot. And here he was sharing some flowers with me under the condition that I didn't tell everybody exactly where they are. So I'm just telling you it is North Palm Springs is going off a bit. Empty lots have lots of flowers. Uh, I saw like everything on, on sunrise, north, every empty lot, flowers. So lots of, lots of opportunities to see flowers. Now, this one, I think if I'm getting it right and remember the story from Tracy Albrecht with the Bureau of Land Management from last year who visited with us. You know what? I should rerun that video. I will do that for you guys. Um, it's the secret life of plants, you know, sounds very salacious. She was the one, she was telling me that some of these guys, they put that little red dot in the middle there to draw in their favorite pollinator, whoever they want it to be, somebody who likes red. And then once they uh, are pollinated, the red dot goes away. Ta-da! Before, after, before, after.
beautiful flowers, beautiful mountains. Little pin cushion in there. Look at those sticky little desert hairs. That's just crazy. All right, let's see. I've got one more here for you. Oh, this was a great one. Just sharing away on my screen right now. I hope you guys can see it. This is for up to the minute information call the Anza Borrego Desert State Park Wildflower Hotline at 760-767-4684, 760-767-4684, or visit the website www.parks.ca.gov and search for Anza Borrego, or you can go to theabf.org wildflower page, they also tell you you can join an email list and get flower alerts sent directly to you. And um, welcome to the desert in the springtime. It's a wonderful place to be. So that is Anza Borrego Desert State Park Wildflower Hotline, 760-767-4684. And that would tell you, obviously, flowers in the Anza Borrego area. Now, another popular hotline that people can check in is the Theodore Payne Hotline, theodorepayne.org. T-H-E-O-D-O-R-E-P-A-Y-N-E, theodorepain.org. And you go to theirs and it's pretty obvious where it is right off the bat. <laughs> so she says, let's see how that goes. Ba -da 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 -da. Everything's here. This is a great little place. We like to share information from other places as much as we can. But here under Learn is the Wildflower Hotline. That picture. And every day they post new things and you get to listen to the current Wildflower Hotline report. I'm not going to play it right now. I don't know if that would be, you know, getting into some sort of uh, intellectual property issue, but let's just say that you can get to this by going to theodorepain.org. All right. I wanted to tell you, I've been, you know, keeping it kind of on the QT here, but uh, Santa Rosa, San Jacinto Mountains National Monument Visit Visitor Center is reopened. It's open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it's an amazing place. Um, we're getting back up to speed. You know, we're kind of at the end of the season, but we're still going to try and get programs going there. This is so exciting. You guys, it's been closed since March of 2020. So it is really exciting to have that back. Now, right out behind it is the Ed Hasty Trail, and it's an accessible trail. Um, you could use a wheelchair on it if you needed to. You can take kids on it. And you can actually take a dog on leash around it as well. Um, and the parking lots are open. The lower one is open actually on the weekends. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you can get a little bit closer. And I walked it the other day and seriously, okay, not this guy, not this uh, little bug right here, but starting with this sweet bush right here, I, I'm gonna show you like 10 flowers. I found that I had never recorded in my iNaturalist before. This is my personal uh, iNaturalist page. These are 10 flowers I, that are there. If you need to go see them, you should go see them. Sweet bush, it's kind of cool. I only found one of those. And actually in general, I don't find like big bunches of those. This coolest thing that I've ever heard, and my, my friend Cindy taught me this one, is this is called a chuckwalla's delight because the chuckwalla really liked to eat it. And the lizards are waking up, as you can see by this picture of my common side blotch friend that feels so dismissive of him. He's not that common. He's quite nice and we have good conversations. Um, he is there. The tortoise, our tortoise, tortoise Bowser has come out of brumation. And I am hearing that people are seeing um, lots of the desert iguanas around as well. I love the desert iguanas. So desert's waking up and there's all kinds of things to see. We've got a sugar bush here. That's got a little bloom going on it. I saw a couple different kinds of cactus. California barrel cactus, just in full bloom there. California buckwheat is blooming. There was 
just one, a Cleveland's beard tongue. Now this is kind of a nerd out for me, but apparently my picture is so good and it has been corroborated by somebody with knowledge and expertise. So it becomes research grade at that point so that it could actually be used as the scientists I was telling you earlier, my community science contribution could actually get used. I actually just checked and somebody used a picture of my a Fremont's put uh, one of my pictures of a Fremont's pin cushion from last year as part of um, like their doctoral thesis or something. So that was kind of cool to nerd out on that. So you can see this in person if you go to the Ed Hasty Trail at the Santa Rosa San Jacinto Mountains National Monument Visitor Center. And here's the Silver Santa. I saw that up there. Look at this little butterfly bush. I want some of these. I definitely want to plant some of these. I would love to desert uh, landscape my whole place. So butterfly bushes and all. Look at the chia. It's so beautiful and crazy looking. Chia, again, research grade. Yay, me. Coming up next. I don't know how to say this. I'm going to just be sassy about it. It's California Sasha Fraj. Correct me if I'm wrong, California Sash Punch. It's a little tiny one, but it was very pretty and very beautiful. The Silver Choya are blooming, nice, nice. And the Blue Palo Verde, just everywhere. I have to tell you, so many of these things have the, the sweetest, most delicate smell. You can stand up at the visitor center and the breeze will blow and you get just a little bit of everything. Brittle bush, desert lavender, everything just smells so fantastic and it's, invigorating and, and refreshing to be out in the desert. I really like it. And here was one more, this poor little plant. I always wonder, do flowers know when they're not quite right? This one, I didn't recognize it because it was so tattered and missing so many parts of it, but it's desert chicory. And apparently it's research grade picture because everybody likes that. Now, one of the other things you can actually do with the iNaturalist is record sounds as well. So I'm practicing on that. And yes, I did see a red tailed hawk recently. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're just about it. No, you know what? I want to do one more thing since I'm here. One more thing. We have been doing our 30 by 30 by 30 DIY fitness fundraising challenge throughout the month of March. We're, we're kind of nearing the end of it. If you think you could do 30 miles in the next week, if you want to jump on, sign up and do 30 miles in the next week, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a $30 donation because I would be impressed with that. But you know who I am really impressed with is the people who've been doing it for us. Look at this. Okay. So, you know, you know, Tammy, she's a bit of a ringer because she is our executive director who celebrated her 18 years with Friends of the Desert Mountains this week. So yay, Tammy. Um, Tammy really works it. She's raising money. She's recruiting people. She's doing a really good job. She takes her commitment to this organization I mean, she takes it to heart and she takes it to the streets because look at her out there. She's getting her miles in and she's raising money. So we have some other great people. Glenn Jones, Teresa Sama. Yay. She's so great. Michelle Lamb, Nancy Hickson, one of our great volunteers. We love her. Rebecca Driscoll happens to be the chairman of the board. So, you know, it looks like there's a little competition happening there. Sharon, you're doing great. Stephanie and Pam. Sharon Matter, nicely done, friend. Nicely done. These are the top participants. These are our top individuals. Ooh, look at Andrew. He's really rolling it out there. Andrew Walls, Angela Teneriello. Teneriello? Angela, good job. Cheryl McKinley, also on our board, past board chair. Lots of people really participating. Tani Darling, what a great name. Shelly Darby Schultz. I just love all these people's names. You guys are also awesome for taking this the initiative to do this challenge on your own and to continue making your miles and raising money. And you, I know you're all doing it because you want that hot pink t-shirt. The wildflower wit, the wildflower festival t-shirt is hot pink like this. And you're all going to look great in it. But we also have some people who are competing as teams. Number one is our Canyon Cougars, ladies and gentlemen, the Canyon Cougars, which is a ladies walking group walking and hiking and they're off and out on the Randall Henderson in the mornings, having a good time and socializing. And in the meantime, they're exercising 
raising awareness and raising funds to help protect the desert mountains that we all love so much. So good job, Canyon Cougars, Banditos. They're sneaking up behind you, though. You got to watch them. La Quinta WW, WW, WW. Thank you. You guys are doing great as well. Tease team. I don't know who that is. T, the Driscoll family. Once again, as you can see, people are really into this. They're having a good time. We've got our fundraising leaders. We've got our teams, our social media leaders. Oh, you guys didn't tell the world about this. We'll work on that later. And the recruiting leaders. These are the people who actually got other people to participate on their teams. And we really appreciate it. You really have about a week left to get in your 30 miles. If you haven't yet, we'll be sending the t-shirts out for you. We really appreciate your support, everybody. It really means a lot to us. Um, organizations like this only exist because people like you support the work that we do. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. We're at the 632 mark. This has been Wildfire Wednesday. I really encourage you to tune in next week. It's our last one. I've got a special project I've been working on that I can't wait to share with you. And um, I guess I'll go out and find you some more wildflowers because I know how you people are. You want your wildflowers. Karen, where's our wildflowers? I will get you some wildflowers. I promise. Okay. This is... Friends of the Desert Mountains, signing off from Wildflower Wednesday on March 23rd. I'm going to go take a nap. You should too. Be careful out there. and Remember to respect the land, connect to the land, and uh, pick up some trash while you're looking at flowers. Be careful doing it. But thank you. This is your public land. And guess what? It's your turn to clean it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>